Hi, this is Nancy with On Points Tutorials Tips and Tours. In this episode, Gina had the opportunity to have a sit-down interview with a very special guest, and I really think you'll like it. And later, we'll go over some of the highlights from Season 2. Hi, welcome to On Point TV. I'm Gina Greenlee, your roving reporter. And today we have a guest, Mr. Rob Appel from Man Sewing. Welcome, Rob. Thank you very much for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Great. Well, in Grand Rapids today, you've done some traveling, and you have a reputation of being one of the most creative quilters right now. Now, it helps you get some attention because you're a man. How did you get started in this business? Wow, I didn't realize I was uh, noticed as one of the more creative quilters. I've been telling everybody that. I'm glad they're listening. Um, I got started because my mom owned a quilt shop. And I came home um, from goofing off, living out of a van, snowboarding, that kind of stuff, and kind of fell in love with working around the, the creative process. I wasn't making quilts. I was actually just helping around the store kind of as a clerk. Uh, a couple years after that, though, she brought in a sewing machine line. And as a dealership, we had to have a service tech. So mom sent me off to school to learn how to service the machines. And then that's where the real natural progression where I was servicing machines simultaneously to learning about garment sewing and quilt making. And I realized there was this huge variety in the, the needs of the machine itself. And so I really started pursuing quilt making at first to learn how to troubleshoot sewing machine service better because I was in a quilt shop that was a dealership. So I had a lot of quilt related questions and about I don't know, two or three squares into it, I fell in love with the process. And I realized this could be really fun as an artistic endeavor as well. And um, I just kind of jumped in head first, I guess. <laughs> Did you have any art background before then? Uh, I failed two different art classes, uh, one in high school and one in college. And actually, I didn't fail them physically. I was failing them all year long until I won the art shows at the end of the year. And the teacher couldn't fail me at that point. So. Um, I've always enjoyed art, but you know what, Gina? I was terrified to try to be a professional artist. Uh, I look back at the careers I've had. I've worked in construction. I've worked in the restaurant business, you know, designing menus and food and, and prep and that. So very artistic things, but I always was terrified to, to do art as a living. And so even in my mom's shop, I wasn't necessarily being artistic. I was being technical. And then my own personal quilts were my expression of art. But then as I began traveling and teaching, I had to eventually just come to terms with the fact that I got to be an artist. And once I gave myself that title, I feel like um, maybe I made it to another rung on the ladder and I started producing art that I was more proud of, both structurally and visually. And I started pursuing it as an art form instead of as a business and then that took off with the business too. So it's been this wonderful reciprocal effect of creativity versus technology versus uh, financial reward as well. That sounds like a fascinating path and, <laughs> and one that would just be a lot of fun. It has been. Okay, now how often do you travel and teach? Well, right now I'm on the road probably 50% of each month. Um, I don't like that much travel. I have a wife and two kids at home and it's rough on all of us, um, but I love getting out and traveling and it's where I get re-energized. And my homework at, or my, my life in my studio at home is incredibly busy keeping up with creating new tutorials and things for my, my other stuff that I do. And so I just, um, when I'm on the road, I recharge. I do a little bit of reading, I do a little bit of knitting. So it's a balance like everything in life hopefully should be. So when did you start mansewing.com? Um, well, and actually in all fairness, I didn't start mansewing. So I was blessed to be asked to participate. Um, so Missouri Star Quilt Company started man sewing when they realized that there were a lot of folks out there, especially on the internet, that were interested in fiber arts that were not necessarily interested in learning in the classroom setting for physical or emotional reasons. They just kind of just wanted to do it on their own. Um, and so they thought it would be fun to put a mail in front of a camera and they actually wanted me to do garment sewing and um, craft style sewing and I said you know I just I'm really not comfortable with much of that uh, I'd rather do quilts and so we came up with an agreement right away and I actually even tried to change the name of the show because I didn't want it to be like I don't want people to think oh it's only for guys or it's only um, about guy related projects if anything I'm just a man sewing and I do have a different approach because I'm not physically trained as a fiber artist. I just kind of have 
you know, uh, stitch my way, dream, dream <laughs> dreams, and made it for one stitch at a time to the end of every project. And um, so, you know, it, it's it's interesting uh, for me the man sewing thing. It morphed as soon as I was invited to be the host of the show and be the creative mind behind the projects. Um, it took a right turn, you know. It's like, I don't want to say it drove down the alleyway, but you know, it, it, the look changed, the feel changed. You know, it's my buddy's music at the beginning of the show, all kinds of stuff, and so. Missouri Star has been incredibly um, giving with it, and they just basically, I, I kind of like to tell folks, they've let me into the studio one day, and they never checked what happened later, and we're just having a blast out there with it now. So I think sometimes people wonder that about us, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Rob, what, what inspires you? Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. It might be easier to give you a list of what doesn't inspire me. Um, I feel very blessed. The Lord is very good to me. Um, I do love to be outside in nature. Um, I try to get a little bit of exercise in every day. I love to surf and be around the ocean. Um, right now, my kids are very inspiring to me. My, my wife, um, she's got a lot of great ideas. The whole man sewing team, we're constantly bouncing ideas back and forth. Um, and did I see one of the kids or two of the kids in one of your videos? You, did. you saw, well, you saw my daughter Ruby um, as one of my guest hosts at 11 years old making an all quilt out of a charm pack and a little uh, skirt and ruffle for her plastic bin. My son was on set running the cameras. So the three of us traveled back to Missouri where we filmed with Jenny's you know, crew back there. And we had a, a blast for the whole week. And um, yeah, they wanted to go back and see Missouri. And I told the kids, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You've got to go back and work while you're there. And my daughter's like, well, I'm making tutorials then. I'm like, well, of course you are. And we just we made a tutorial. It was a hit. I had so much fun showing her off. And I think she just did a great job on it, you know. Well, and will she be starting her own site, girlsewing.com? Um, no, not girlsewing. I think it's going to be called girlslime.com. And she is one of these young ladies right now that is going around doing all these different chemistry concoctions and making slime. And it is a big thing in California. And she is videoing all of these different chemical compounds of slime she is making. She doesn't do anything with the video. She just, she, she sets up the camera. Sometimes my son, Braden, films for her and stuff. They have fun with it. Um, but, you know, it would be called like, like you know, slimesisters.com or something. It, it wouldn't be uh, sister sewing for sure. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Creativity finds so many places, uh, so many new outlets and, and things that you just would never think about. So right, right. slime, yeah. uh, maybe I'll try it. Well, and like my, my, my poly pellets went missing and they're in the slime now. You know, like she's, she's adding, she's like making tapioca slime and, and all kinds of weird stuff. It's like, where'd these parts go? And like you find them covered in slime really it's like we're living with the ghostbusters at my house right now <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent well you know what it's great to see young people uh, participating in creative arts and crafts it's something that uh, you know it's not taught in the schools anymore and so it's up for up to us to keep that creativity flowing yeah i'm i'm really excited to see the kids getting into it and that's been the biggest reward that I didn't expect with man sewing. I was hoping we would find a bunch of quilters watching the show and want to be brand new, you know, fiber artists and quilters enjoying the show and learning. When I travel places, we have young children, a lot of young boys showing up, like eight year olds, 11 year olds. And um, recently a person put on my, uh, at the end of one of my videos that they really considered me a role model. Um, and it means the world to me that, uh, these parents would have their children watching my videos to learn how to do creative stuff because they trust that it'll be fun, it'll be clean, it'll be entertaining, um, and the kids will learn something. And so um, I kind of drop everything I'm doing if a young person's around and make sure they get all my attention. I just really want to foster and, and sponsor that creativity. My mom didn't really know how to say no. And, and, and in the first few years, it didn't work out so good. And later on, you know, later when I was wearing mismatched shoes and all kinds of crazy outfits and stuff to school, she didn't stop me then either. And then she was the one who hired me at that quilt shop and let me, you know, really didn't say no there either. And so I've lived in a world where my creativity was really fostered and, and really um, kind of got to develop in whatever direction I wanted to. So I try to provide that with a lot of the kids around. And I'm really just, I actually even met children that were at Houston International Quilt Festival that had come. Um, and man, it was just, it was so rewarding, you know. And there was 35,000 people or whatever there, and there was like three kids I met. And it was the, the, I'll never forget those three kids. So. <laughs> That's amazing. You have a huge amount of enthusiasm and um, energy. Are you always this enthusiastic? I try to be. Um, I am always this energetic. Um, I do get nervous about stuff sometimes. And so if I, somebody with this much energy, if you're in a bad mood, you're also in a really bad mood. Um, 
most people never see me down because it's being around people and quilting with folks and giving the education that really brings me up. So, I mean, yeah, we've been hanging out for a couple of days together. Last night at the end of the show, I'd been on my feet for 14 hours giving instructions and I couldn't stop. I just was wound up. And so, yeah, uh, I am very energetic. I am often very positive. I do feel very, very blessed, but it's all the people I work around that, that energize me. So the more I work, the better it is, I guess. I, I do understand that yeah. because I think that, you know, when you are with people who are creative, that energy feeds off of each other and your idea gets gets made better by that idea and that person's idea. Um, and one of the things that you do is you do have patterns right. that you make available to the marketplace. And how? what are your dreams for your pattern line? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I actually really like doing books so that the dream I have right now is this new book I would like to put out. Um, and it, it'll be a couple years down the road. I guess though, more than a dream, what I try to do with some of my patterns is offer something unique or different in a technique or a skill set. I guess one of the things I've been doing for a lot of years is cutting with a really small rotary cutter. So I'll, even my applique projects and stuff, I, and when I teach them in the workshops, I, I show people cutting applique with small rotary cutters, um, different approaches, things. So I guess I don't have necessarily a dream set for the pattern business, but with man sewing, we have an entire product line. And what, I guess patterns are something, I don't wanna say old hat to me, but I've been making patterns and making a nice income off of patterns and books for a while. Templates are what's new to me, and tools are what's new to me. And I've had a, a bunch of ideas for years, but creating templates and tools that work, and the, it's the engineering process, it's the drafting process, it's the putting it all together and then seeing it work and then putting it out for sale and seeing people, one, use it the way it was intended, but even better, use it the way it wasn't intended and sending all these photographs of what they've made with something I've created. And so that's, I guess, if, if I had a real dream in the pattern slash product era um, would be for me to come up with some really nice, efficient tools that would help, especially new quilters, just be precise but free at the same time. That'd be great. I'm I, as a relatively new quilter. I look forward to seeing yeah, those. Yeah, I look forward to coming up with an idea that works. <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah. Robert. At last, if there was one thing that you could tell our our viewers, what what would that be? What one piece of advice do you have? About anything. One piece of advice about anything. Um, try it. Whatever it is, try it. You're thinking about it. You're considering it. Just give it a try. And even if it doesn't go smoothly, pat yourself on the back for trying something new. And remember, you'll probably improve every time you try it again. So just keep trying and trying and trying and don't give up. That's what? fabulous. Rob Appel, mansewing.com and Missouri Star Quilt. Fabulous resources to all of us quilters and crafters. And I thank you very much for visiting Thanks us so here in Grand Rapids. Here. Oh, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. My pleasure. In this first segment, we're going to take a quick look at the tutorials and tips that help demonstrate the learning to quilt lessons that I've been covering over the past two seasons. When I first wrote this book 12 years ago, I never imagined I'd be standing in front of a camera teaching to all of you out there. Let's take a look at what we've covered. Ready! Hi, my name is Nancy Rolfsma and I'm a quilter. I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques that I use when I'm making quilts that make quilting easier. A nine patch block is a block with nine squares in the construction of the block. So now I have opened up just those last stitches. Now when I open this up to press it, I can press this seam in one direction and the second seam in the opposite direction. For this technique, I've cut these squares two and seven eighths inches, which is the size that I need for a two inch finished half square triangle. Here we have a flying goose. This is probably the easiest technique for doing flying geese, um, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different techniques a little bit later on. So here's your divers. They're gonna walk to the end of the strip of fabric. I know it's silly, just hang in there with me, okay? As they're at the end of the fabric, now this is the fold of the fabric, you want them to lift at the same time. So in synchronized diving, I'm told, they actually jump at the same time, I know it's silly, and then they fold it 
and then they jump into the pool at the same time. This one's called the purple thang. Now the purple thang has a very sharp point. It also has a squared off edge so that when you're using this to turn your pieces, this is not gonna be so sharp that you're gonna poke through the fabric, but it's sharp enough that it's gonna give you a really crisp point. Here's my last one coming out. All the paper is out. Not even a smidge of paper is left behind. And the front side looks beautiful. So with this wonky strip coping technique, you're gonna see that the strips are gonna end up being large on one side and the smaller. So the blocks are actually tipped. So the first row is going to be the bottom row that is going to have our large assembled setting triangle on the two ends, our rail fences, and then our, set, our sampler blocks. That's going to be one row. Our second row, so let me fold this down, our second row is going to be our setting squares and triangles with just a rail fence. And then we're going to end with our third row, which is a corner triangle. Pick up another one, lay it down. So do you see how quickly I can do that? Not that I'm trying to rush you through the quilt making process. It's just one of those things that can make the process go a little bit faster so you can get to the end stage of your finished quilt. So now our little quilt is all done. We have our first border using the cornerstones in it, and then we have the traditional horizontal border to finish this out. Then when you spin the seam ripper, so now it's on the fat side, that's going to make the head of the pin raise up, and then you push the pin down to close it. So it's really quite quick. So I've got my walking foot on. My walking foot is attached. And what you want to notice with the walking foot is as it works, there's these little top teeth that are going to come up and go down. And that is going to actually move the fabric at the top and the bottom. So your feed dogs underneath are going to match up with the feed dogs on the top with the walking foot. And what I figured out really early on, that the proper thread for in the ditch quilting is invisible thread. But I am a huge Star Trek fan, always have been, have loved watching sci-fi. So to me, a design like this looks like an alien. He has a big head and a little neck. And then there's another alien, and he's got a big head and a little neck. When that is done, the quilt is done. That means I have finished my quilt. Before this, the binding is on, the quilt isn't finished. So now it is finished. One of the things that adds something extra to our shows is our tours. And Gina, our roving reporter, is going to introduce this next segment. Thank you very much, Miss Nancy. Welcome. Yes, tutorials, tips, and tours. So for tours, I try to take you to places that you might not have had an opportunity to visit on your own. Let's take a look at some of the places we've seen. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go! Nancy, look what I found at the quilt show. A man! That's right.
quilt behind me was a quilt that was made by the members in honor of their 30th anniversary in 2007. And I can see that there are signatures on, on the quilt. Are you on there? I am, but I think I'm behind the sign. <laughs> Bummer. Hi, it's Gina Greenley, Robin Reporter for On Point. I'm just hanging around in the archives in the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Hi. This is Nancy with On Point's Tutorials, Tips and Tours, and me and Michelle and Gina <laughs> went to the festival, the International Food Festival Thank you. in Chicago. In Hi, it's Nancy and Gina. We are in St. Louis at Spring Quilt Market, home of the arch. Home of the arch. I like that take better. Just so you know, none of us are professional actors. And here at On Point, we're not always on point. This next segment will show you some of our off point moments. Let's take a look. Clap! with On Point's tutorials, tips, and tours. The show that focuses on, on how well Thomas walks backwards. <laughs> Can I start in and say, hey Nancy, look what I found, a man. Can I say that since you've already recorded it? Sure. Hi, welcome to On Point. We have a guest. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Most definitely negative. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. So, yeah. Wait, whoa. I am not ready. I'll put the shoes on the Do I look good? <laughs> I can't. fly. I just screwed that one up. Broilation. Bella's Navy Dad. Okay, this is what I found on the web for Gwen Natale in English. Merry Christmas. Holy cares <laughs> How did you get her? <laughs> <laughs> And a happy new year. Oh, I'm in the top. It's down. Okay. I was looking at God. Yaner Yaner. Merry Christmas! Don't oh. look around with Merry Christmas. Who's looking around? I'm looking around after having a new year. Oh, okay. I kind of, all right. <laughs> this is a legit one. I'll take number one. Three, two. Merry Christmas! Okay, so now let's do it. And a 
and Happy New Year and look around. Okay. And are we being goofy too? Not yet. Okay. And Happy New Year! No, not look down. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs>